I'm excited. You know why I'm excited? Because Gladstone's here. Yes, that's that's right. In this little unassuming package, finally, I have a Gladstone kit from Oh Mr. Porter. I absolutely love this film. Love Will here. Such a great guy. Anyway, big thanks Tom Marshall, legend, absolute legend, master curator. Colorize his photographs as well from from back in them days when everything were black and white. And he he does a damn good job. Look at that. Anyway, he's a big fan of Will Hay and Buggles, Kelly and oh, Mr. Porter. And he started making stuff for the film a while ago. And I've always wanted a Gladstone. Because it's such a unique and, and funny looking little look. And what if you can just sort of see it there, look, in the thing. And I finally got one of the 3D printed kits from him. Jenny Kirk, good friend of mine, she was kind enough to provide me with an Electro Train chassis. Which is what you require. And then we've got the instructions here. This is quite funny because the instructions, uh, they, um, <laughs> they're a little bit silly, which is quite funny. Like, ask Albert to put the breakfast on. <laughs> anyway, I'm going to take you guys through this as best I can. And we're going to turn this, this bucket, this, this bucket, we're going to turn this packet of, of bubble wrap into a locomotive. Let's go. You even get a little bit of milk chocolate. Oh, yes. Okay. We're here at the bench of working and we're just assembling the little Gladstone body and it's pretty simple to do. You got four sets of steps, easy enough, a little bit of glue in here. I'm using this stuff because I've got an activate for it. And then it's just a case of sticking the steps yonder like that. And uh, that's it. Although I think it's worth mentioning, you just need to make sure that these are nice and smooth. You see there's a little bit of rays flashing there, so we're just going to cut that off, sand it back, and then the steps should all be on nicely. Yeah, and the buffers in is actually really simple. You don't need to overthink this whatsoever. They actually press fit pretty good. In fact, to be honest with you, the clearance and the, the, the precision fit of these is so great that it actually puts a lot of of factory you know manufacturers to shame if this is the level we can expect from 3d printing then i don't know man this this is um this is damn good okay let's get the rest of these buffers fitted and the chimney and then we're going to give it a spray paint all right there we go that's the body shell done this has just been sprayed all over and i've done the underside as well i know you're not going to see it but you know i've sprayed in the cab too um, I'm, I've got a little bit of a I caught the corner there you can just see but I'm not too panicked about that because in the film Gladstone is in a heavy state of disrepair it's heavily implied that she just lives outside at the back of the goods yard at Buggles Kelly so that's fine so once this is dried fully the paint I've used is VHT paint from Halfords. It's designed for engine bays, but it sets like really hard, but also really chalky and grabby. So it'll take weathering powders, paints and everything else really, really well. So once that's dried and my special paints have arrived, we'll finish up detailing the rest of this little bad girl. Awesome. Okay then, folks. So I've got my camera set up. I can just about see what's been filmed here. And it's the day after. Painting Gladstone in her, uh, her base cop. And if I can just, hopefully, adjust the brightness. You can see a little bit better in there. No. Anyway, not to worry. See, all done. All spread nicely. Undercarriage done as well. This is just the VHT paint, like I said before. What we're going to do though is we need to turn our attention to painting the actual sole bars and buffers and what have you. So I'm just going to use some red acrylic for that. But for the buffers and the brass or copper um, dome, bell, safety valves and what have you, I'm actually going to use this stuff. Now, this is a thing called rub and buff, which I know the name sounds a little bit dodgy, but I used to use this stuff previously. For other art projects and it's basically a wax resin like a wax gilding paste 
but it's got metallic pieces of gold and things in it. So a little bit of it dry brushed on will really give it a nice worn look, a bit like an antique uh, lamp handle or something like that. So once I've done all the basic painting, we're going to have a go at this. Now I'm not going to show show me painting a bloody sword by, you know how to do that, you know daft. Once I've done that though, we'll have a crack at showing this. Okay, so we've got the bubble rings painted there, they're still just about drying. I've also just picked out a little bit of cab detail, the dials there, the plant pot and the little brown rag. Okay, um, now we're going to move on to the rub and buff. This gold leaf here, if you can see that, then we've got this antique gold colour, then this silver pewter colour, which is like a nice metal colour. It's quite simple really. Just like any other sort of paint like this, so the gold leaf, and you don't need much of this at all. So I am just literally going to put a little tiny bit of this over here. Just a, honestly, just a little dab. Then we take our favourite dry, drying brush. Dry brush, dry drying brush, dry brush. Okay, get a little bit on there. Get most of it off. It is potent and then we're just gonna so let's start with this little bit on the uh, the chimney you can just see the sort of effect it's gonna have so we're gonna do and the nice thing about the ribbon buff is once it's on there The more you fiddle with it, the shinier it gets. See that? Look at that, it's going to look fantastic. And that's all you do with it. You can see that effect, can't you? Really cool. So I'm going to finish doing this. And just on the cab, just quickly. Hello, so I mean, I'm just gently dry brushing the cab interior. I'm already starting to pick out that brass work in there. So I'm going to crack on with this off camera because it's difficult to do on camera, guys. And we'll get back to it a bit later on. Well, then, there we are. That was how. Hold on a second. Get on brand, Craig. <laughs> okay, <laughs> that was the little bit of a build of the Gladstone model from Bubbles Kelly Station by Todd Marshall. And I think it's a cracking looking little model. Let's have a look, I've got it just here now. And she's sat on the Electro Train chassis. And I've got to be honest with you, I am super impressed with it. And this is all 3D printed. That's the thing you need to remember, it's not mass produced it's 3d printed everything even the deep look at that cab detail there look. that is all 3d printed i mean you even have firms like rapido who have their production samples 3d printed by model you and they look fantastic i even said to, i think it was david from from uh, rapido a long time ago now when they first revealed the port of par twins i said i'd be happy with the 3D prints and just stick them on a chassis because they look that good. I am now a firm believer that 3D printing has quite easily got to a point where it actually even surpasses what we once considered to be the pinnacle of detail for ready to run locomotives and rolling stock as little as 10 years ago. Maybe not even that. Of course, with 3D printing, there's no end to what you can do. And I am really strongly considering getting myself a resin 3D printer and having a go at making something myself or maybe just experimenting with STL files like the Gladstone one, for example, and just seeing what I actually can create myself and just thinking is it going to be any more affordable let's be honest i mean let's just put glass in that for a second before we drop her 
Reddit to run prices are always going to increase. That's just the way it is. It's no one particular manufacturer's fault. It's just how things are going. The economies of the countries where everyone gets their models built are getting better and people are getting, quite rightly as well, a fair living wage and that bumps prices up. And it's just something that we're all going to have to just learn to accept a little bit if you want to buy ready to run stuff. But this is where I think 3D printing will never fully replace ready to run stuff. But I certainly think it's going to help augment the hobby. You think about how things used to be quite a while ago in the hobby, there was a lot of stuff not made ready to run. Most things came as a kit. Or dare I say it, you have to scratch build or take something that already existed and heavily modify it to make the thing you wanted. Funnily enough, modelling in model railways. Yeah, a bit weird that, it? rather than just getting your credit card out, swiping the hell out of it every Saturday and Sunday and paying the mortgage of, of HQ Hornby. <laughs> sorry Hornby, sorry. <laughs> you actually use a little bit of your grandma and I must admit, I know it's not a proper kit, a proper kit. All I had to do with that was stick four steps on, four buffer beams, sorry, four buffers should I say, and the chimney. Prime it, paint it, weather it, and stick it on the chassis, which came, I mean, this is the body that came on the chassis from Electro Train, which cost like 60 quid, cheap as chips. So for a little under 90 pounds, I think the whole thing, it would cost if you bought it all new, not second hand. You've got yourself something truly unique, which you cannot get in ready to run format. And that's the thing we're gonna get here. It's, it's like a, it's almost coming full circle in a way now. You're gonna be able to make, well not, never mind gonna be able to. You can make the sort of locomotives and roll stock that you want. You can even make any detail parts you want. There are, Companies out there now, we've got firms such as Rusty Rails, and you've got Inixia Models, and you've got Westall Wagon Works, and there's a, just a, a list and list and list of all these innovative companies. And model you, model you, Christ, they can scan you and make, make a 3D little version of you. I've got one up there, and we are on my out. Things have come so far with 3D printing and scanning, and it, it's almost like a renaissance in a, in a way of, of the creativity part of the hobby in terms of what you can have and what can be achieved at home for the average modeler. Whereas the tools of, of the trade back in the day was a lot of brass and goggles and cutting of fine parts and measuring bits and pieces. The modern forge, if you will, is a computer with a little bit of simple to use 3D editing software. And you print it out. So rather than spending a week whistling away a piece of wood, to make the thing you want, you design it, or you purchase an SDL file from any number of 3D websites that are out there these days, or you can even buy your own handheld scanner and scan the thing yourself if you, if you can get it in, in, in reach of your computer or whatever. And then you press the print button, and that's it. You wait a few hours, and there's your model. Give it a quick rinse, cure it in your UV cure if it's a, uh, a resin model. And that's it, you've, you've got the kit, the kit's there, that's it. And all you need to do then is paint it, prime it, and away you go. Huge sense of no, achievement, really, if I'm brutally honest with you. Just something that's so, so satisfying. I sat at this desk for an hour and a half painting a buffer beam. Two buffer beams I spent, and then I spent another hour and a half weathering it. And then I came back to it and spent a further hour just touching up little details and adding little little interest points and getting the rubber buff. This stuff's fantastic, by the way. Really recommend this, guys. I completely forgot all about it, but get the rubber buff. It's great for making metal, well, making things that are plastic look like metal. And then you can weather it down afterwards. So great bit of kit. Secret weapon, that. And it was just, it's just come together so nicely. And there was a few people out there, as there always is, that have said that they think the model is sat too high on the chassis for Glaston. I, I don't think it is. Um, as I'll show you in a second, when you pop it next to um, a, a piece of ready to run rolling stock for something would be, that would be in the same sort of era as Glaston is, everything sits nice. 
and it, it works together and I'll show you that just now actually but we'll have a quick look at that we are that's flashing just sat on the old filly yard there and we'll have a bit of a zoom in and as you can see the buffer beams match up so I'm not I'm not sure how I mean she sat perfectly on the chassis the buffer beams are the right height buffers are, are slightly higher than that wagon but then again the buffers are slightly higher on these two wagons they're a different height so the buffers don't even always match up even on ready to run stuff so I don't think you can be too critical about the fact that the buffers are a fraction too high on that I think it looks fantastic look at that looks brilliant and of course we've got Will Hay there who's going to go in there oh he's fallen out Will Hay's been on the pop I'm going to get Will Hay in there and then our bottle and Albert which we've got there they're, they're all going to go in there and I'm thinking of uh, by the way I think I'm I'm getting I'm getting used to printing some more models like this it really wasn't my um can I get the camera to focus on Albert there? Hold on, camera. Focus on young Albert. Oh, it won't focus. Pain in the ass. Horrible camera. Never mind. But I'm getting used to painting small details, and I don't think that looks too bad at all. Even Harbottle looks alright. Anyway, back to me talking. So then, with all that in mind, should manufacturers, should they be fearing the 3d printed reaper or or is there actually an opportunity here what if what if manufacturers and we were talking about this last week what if manufacturers produced two types of a model they had the ready to run version which is all built and done for you and everything else and that would have the retail price of between 200 and 300 pounds as we're seeing now but then they have the 3d printed version now of course you could buy the 3d printed version it'd be a bit more or you could buy the kit version which would be significantly less you print it out yourself it's unpainted so it'd be essentially a 3d printed kit version and you build it yourself at home but you would save yourself 150 quid how many people out there would actually go, do you know what, I'll have a go at that. By the time you bought a chassis for 30, 40 quid, you can actually save yourself, I would say you probably can save yourself about 50% of a retail, but are there any manufacturers brave enough to try it out? Of course you need a chassis and the suitable locomotive to work with that chassis, which is commonly available. But again, Hornby have got a few for 20, 30 quid. The low 40 chassis. I like to try and do the 060. Again, that's Hornby though. I, I think there's something to be tapped into there. I really do. And manufacturers, please, if you're watching, guys, do leave a comment below. Is teaming up with the 3D printed market something you've considered? Something you've looked at before? Is it not fully viable? Does it just not fit in with your business model? Which is absolutely fair enough. Or is it something you're secretly working on and you're not letting on because it is actually a really clever idea because you can cover both sides of the coin rather than appealing just to one set of models you can appeal to near enough everyone the tight fisted lot that don't want to spend a damn penny you want everything and then the lads and the lasses that want everything detailed and flushable toilets inside the marble carriages and of course the guys that sit somewhere in between as well and of course, I want to know what you guys think as well. As always, leave comments down below. We'll have a chat about this. Have you any experience with 3D printed kits, models like this? Let me know. Of course, I built that Class 13 as well. That was a, 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 a 3D printed kit and that looks fantastic. So this is now my second attempt for 3D printing. And I must admit, I must thoroughly admit, it's got me hungry for experimenting more with 3D printed models. So until next week, folks, thanks very much for watching. Do please, please don't forget to give a like if you do enjoy what you see here. And subscribe. Cost you nothing. Helps me feel validated. And if you're still watching at this point, you are an absolute legend. Cheers. See you soon. Take care. Bye-bye.